Let's Podcast alongside Wes Durham filling in for Joe That's Giglio. What has happened? I am Joe Ovius inside Eford Studios in downtown Raleigh. <laughs> Big thanks to Empire Properties and, of course, thanks to Copiers Plus. And Wes is already plugging the sponsors with Breeze Through. You don't have to worry about me and sponsors. I've been doing this all my life, my man. <laughs> Come on. What are we doing here? Man, Scalco filled in yesterday, and I, and I joked with him, just like I joked with you before we got started, yeah. that, you know, the the mic 2 level is usually a little higher than mine because, you know, you got to compensate for Joe's. 30 seconds in, we're doing engineering? Absolutely, because okay. people need to know. But Where's I'm like, Keith Harrison? Where's Rusty Hills? Oh, gosh, shout out to Rusty. <laughs> the GOAT. The OG, the OG. OG, OG. He is the OG of OG of yeah. OGs. If they write the book and Rusty's not quoted, it's oh, not really it's, the book. And he, yeah, he knows all the stories. <laughs> no, but I feel like with Maniscalco and now you, I'm like, ah, yes, professional <laughs> broadcasters. <laughs> Let me turn this down. But we are not professionals. You walked in, you're like, there's just an E.H. Taylor sitting right here. Yeah, what is that? You got, the, you got the corner of bourbon over there. Holy cow. Wes? Let me tell you what. That looks like a four and a half star bar sitting over in that corner. <laughs> Look, man, when we go live, there's a bottle of ancient, ancient age. Yes. Sitting there. Yes. Yes. We have we have a connect. We have a connect. Golly. In fact, he actually just provided another bottle of bourbon for us. And when we do the podcast festival, we might have. A special bottle of bourbon I, to raffle off. Can can I say that this? Um, you give new meaning to the word hostility room. Oh, in yeah, here man. now. Well, oh. somebody's got to carry the torch. We Absolutely. know the we know the real ACC hostility room ain't what it used to be. <laughs> Tim Brando <laughs> led hostility room. <laughs> well, as you know, anyway. So uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. So we'll get into a lot of stuff today. I, I saw that you brought your. Uh, Wait a second. Did you buy it? Wait. Oh yeah, heck yeah, I bought it. All right. Now it's officially college football season. Mark Packer and I yeah. totally buy these. Okay. We don't want to be on the comp mail list. So you, oh, so you straight up buy the oh, Phil Steele. Absolutely. Okay, good for you, man. I, I used to get the comps back in the day. And I'm, I'm pleased to tell you that the Big Ten <laughs> and the SEC are represented on the cover. Yeah, I don't see any ACs. No DJ Ui Ungalale, no Jaden Ott. Can't get some Grayson McCall on there? No Grayson McCall. I thought, it, I thought I thought State think, was a little bit of a sleeper this uh, year. Where's I the will, love? I will tell you this: there is a regional. Co- this is the national cover. Okay, on the back, mm-hmm. on the back, we do have a cover that has Kyron Drones. Um, that looks like Xavier Restrepo. Okay, uh, Casey Concepcion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, you got Barrett Carter, and here's Darius Washington, the offensive lineman of Florida State. Dude, I'm not even ready. Go, I, right I was there. Gilio and I were talking about stuff yesterday because he he called me. Yeah, um, he apparently needed a break from the in laws, so he called me. So ask me anything, right, right. <laughs> and I just submitted credentials for ACC kickoff, sure, which is uh, about a month less than a month away. It is at the fabulous Hilton in Uptown Charlotte this year. Oh, it's oh they changed the it Weston up. is under renovation. Oh, so we can't go back to our old haunts. That's yeah. too bad. I mean, everything's changing. The Southeastern Conference is going to Dallas, Texas. So when does the ACC go to Dallas to welcome our friends from SMU? Jones Angel has a... Jones Angel and Adam Lucas have a wonderful term. They call them pony bros. <laughs> <laughs> because when you think about... Have you ever been to SMU? They might as well just call them bronies at this point. Well, you need to have Roddy Jones on for we- the full SMU orientation. Really? Roddy went there three times last year. Oh, geez. He and Roy Philpott did in their coverage of the American. Okay. So Roddy says, outside of a bar running, uh, there's a metal <laughs> bar that runs right through the TV booth, apparently. Okay. But he said, outside of that, you're going to love it. All right. And, like, and by the way, credit shout out Rick Hart. Shout out Rick Hart, who is uh, the grandson of the one of the Southern Conference's uh, founding fathers, not from the 1920s, but in terms of modernization of the Southern Conference, his grandfather, Dave Hart, senior, yeah. Yeah, yeah. was the commissioner. His dad, of course, Dave Hart, was the AD at East Carolina, AD at Florida mm-hmm. State. Nonetheless, Rick Hart, they raised $156 million. Did you see that note last week? SMU's never lacked for in money. In the midst of your Florida Swamp Tour? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, SMU's off to a terrific start and needs to be because, as we know, they're here on an eight-year discount. They are. That's <laughs> what I said. They don't need the money. In fact, I'll actually pull this up from a YouTube comment. Um, we had, where was it? Let me see if I can pull this up. This is from the other. This is from the show on Monday when right. Brownlow was here. SMU is. This is from RX twenty eight seventy eight. SMU is like the team walk on with rich parents. 
We now live in a world where SMU isn't even isn't even in the ACC yet, and it seems to love being in the ACC more than UNC. They really are benefiting in preseason hype and polls. Yeah. SMU praises, flatters, chirps so much about being in the ACC, it almost makes me blush. Well, hey, time for the AC. Time to be the ACC that SMU says you are. Well, and it's interesting because, as you know, when you cover a league now that goes coast to coast, yeah, um, you're going to bring other elements of coverage into your footprint for the first time. Sure. So there are podcasts, there are Twitter feeds, there's things that are going to go on in Northern California. There are things that are going to go on in the Fort Worth and Dallas area, the Metroplex, that are yeah. going to become factors in the way we look at the league. So from that standpoint, I'm kind of interested to see how that looks. And also, as we follow these teams, how do they, you know, acclimate themselves to the ACC, given sure. what we perceive to be these, you know, and truly enormous travel hurdles. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. I think it'll be interesting. I, I am not quite yet in the college football mindset. I mean, maybe I need to buy myself a, a Phil Steele and an Athlon and a Sporting News or whatever else. Blue Ribbon, do they all still exist? How many Blue Ribbon magazines? doesn't do football? You know, oh, Athlon, I got that one too. You got the Athlon one too? Oh, Wes, you are prepped, man. You're ready to go. Athlon does have Kate Klubnick, <laughs> uh, Patrick Payton. Uh, that's a regional Restrepo. cover. That's yeah, a regional that's cover. That's a regional cover. Okay. Yeah, we got okay. a regional cover there on that. <laughs> I got them both here. <laughs> hey, look, you can't say I'm not ready. You're always prepped. I never I never question whether or not All you're right. prepared for something. God, these uh, things but, are expensive, too, the, by the way. You can't you, is that not like a tax write-off for you? Oh, it is. Thanks, Joe. Okay. okay we'll move on. <laughs> I mean, I got the OG card. That's how I'm going to buy those things. That's why. Oh, you guys, that's right. You guys have some corporate card. And, right. And you have to keep, you know, Gilio. It's a good thing Gilio's not here because he would manage to take the magazines and then multiply it maybe with an E.H. Taylor or something There's else under that. the corporate yes. you know, awning of refreshment or something. Well, he wanted to buy a, a foldable bike, which is Something that and he put did. it on the company card. I believe he did put it on the company card. That way, it saves us money on parking downtown. That was his argument. Parking's not that bad here. Nah, it's three bucks. Plus, if you play the game, you might not pay at all. I'm just That's, saying. If you play the game, if yeah. you play the game, if you know which blocks are ones that don't get monitored a lot. Now, but like it's it's strange. Uh, when I was signing up for the ACC kickoff, I just I am not. I'm not in that mindset yet, man. I'm still kind of coming off the Carolina Hurricanes. Yeah, you know, what are they going to do this off season? Sure. They got free. They got the draft up the, coming up. We got free agency next Especially week. Especially after the Cup, it was a great. I mean, the finals oh, yeah. were terrific. Yeah, the, but as I was kind of going through, you know, going through the checklist in my head, I'm like, oh, okay, Wes is hanging out. Obviously, football can be a topic. Sure. I got to start thinking about ACC kickoff. We're only going Wednesday and Thursday of ACC kickoff. That's when uh, the locals will be there. Wake Forest and Duke on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. State and Carolina on thursday maybe right. we'll talk to Dabo. i don't know but we'll see because right? clemson's going to be there on a thursday but it's we're so my my initial thought off the top of my head was it goes back to what i said at the end of last season okay we are heading into a preseason hype cycle that is the inverse of what we've had the last couple of years in the triangle specifically. Right. You've had Drake May, you've had recruiting classes for Mac Brown. This mm -hmm. was a team that was supposed to be in contention. We don't have to relitigate the last couple of years sure. and what could have been. It didn't. It didn't work out. Right now, there is zero, zero hype, zero discussion around the Tar Heels. I Correct. think that's what Mac wants to Prob surprise people. It's, it's probably the right thing right now yes. for Carolina. Yes. Whereas NC State, as we get closer there's, to the start of the season, there'll be a hype train. Not only is there going to be a hype train, we also have to talk about them a little bit differently. It's the defense that's going to be the big question mark as they cycle through a whole bunch of new players. Obviously, you're going to trust Tony Gibson and what they do and what their identity is. We right. know what a Dave Dorn team is. It's the offense and whether or not with Grayson McCall, Casey, who's on the cover, who's going to be going to get a lot of hype, some of the transfer portal guys, are they going to be a dynamic offense or is this going to be the typical NC State offense we've seen the last couple of years that just needs to do enough, I, yeah, I and let you. the rest take over. Yeah, I think this this is one. Of, and look, I I wouldn't say this but if it were on ACC Network or whatever. I would still tell you, NC State's going to be a case study from week one against Western Carolina on. Yeah, and the reason Western Carolina is important is because it needs to it needs to give you the framework of what you might see the next week in Charlotte against Tennessee, mm -hmm. right? Because the Tennessee game, just like Florida-Miami in week one, looms as big games, not just for those teams, but for the league. Yeah. And we're back into that conversation again. 
Because this is one of the things I say about the new world of college football. I think there's a lot of excitement, a lot of interest, expanded playoff. What's this going to look like with all the big conferences, right? Mm -hmm. 17 in the ACC, 16, I guess, in the Big 12, uh, 14 in the Big 10, 16 in the SEC, right? I think those are the numbers, if I'm right. Remember, size doesn't matter, Wes. Yeah. Um, mass does mass mass mass, mass. Yeah. mass. Yeah, it's a shame you didn't see Brown Low when she was in here the, talking about mass. I was listening. I told you this the other night. I was listening <laughs> after I landed from Chicago, like at midnight. I was listening to your podcast driving home, and I had about a forty-five minute ride. And I would have loved to have seen Brown Low's face when you said mass is more. Mass is more. <laughs> mass is more. And. I mean, it just went downhill from there. I yeah, mean, a proud, a, o, proud OG moment. Yeah, yeah. But, but Joe, here's the thing. Teams and, and fan bases, they're going to be at a high level, right? Yeah. I get it. Across the country. But here's the deal in these big leagues. And it proves itself in the National Football League every year. Somebody's going to stink who you think is going to be good. Mm -hmm. And somebody who's really been high. It's like Packer used to give me this stat that every year somebody in the preseason top 10 finishes out of the top 25. Of course. Yeah, right. every year. Every okay. Year. Now take that into a league account. Mm -hmm. There's somebody, look, the ACC is Florida State, Clemson, and then kind of it's a third line. And I'm not so sure that three isn't closer to two than two is to one. Mm -hmm. Okay. But three, four, five, six. I said something on Sirius XM a couple of weeks ago with Childers and New Heisel, and I had Louisville people in my timeline. Oh, boy. They go hard. Louisville people, they go hard, want, man. They want in. Yeah. And I'm, I'm ready to bring you in, but your schedule's harder than it was last year. But that doesn't mean that somebody from, let's say, 8 to 14 can't move into the top five or six. Mm -hmm. Okay? I don't know who it'll be. That's why we're going to play it out. But in every league, that's going to happen. Somebody in the SEC, somebody in the Big Ten, somebody in the Big 12. Locally, I understand what North Carolina is trying to do this upcoming season. Sure. Um, they're going to be uh, run-oriented. Mm -hmm. They want a quarterback. And they should be. And they should be. Yep. They want a quarterback. And this is the way it was sold to everybody, mm -hmm. you know, Max Johnson comes in and he's going to be the guy who doesn't turn the ball over. It was it was interesting leading up to the draft where as much as everybody kind of hyped up Drake May, right. there was this whisper of, yeah, Drake May was great, but, you know, those turnovers. So that could change the nature of a game. Yeah. I, I know I rolled my eyes on it. I, I understood it was meant mostly to be just don't sleep on this offense. It's going to be retooled and it actually might work out better for North Carolina without turning the ball over. I totally get that. Mm hmm. But that is all predicated on the idea that North Carolina's defense is going to be good enough at Correct. stopping people, sure. not having those catastrophic moments that we've seen. Sure. Mac Brown not trying to spin numbers the way that he's done the last couple of years about how good or how bad the defense is. Now, that does come down to getting somebody dynamic like Jeff Collins from Georgia Tech sure. to bring the Waffle House vibes to Chapel Hill. Mm -hmm. But does he have the Jimmy's and the Joe's to go with what we understand he wants to do schematically. Mm -hmm. I don't know the answer to that question because it's not like North Carolina hasn't had talent on the defensive end before, and yet they still find themselves lagging behind what the offense typically does. And to me, the reason why North Carolina has come up short a couple of years is because of just one defensive stop, one key change or whatever it is. That. I think... Okay, here's my here's my thought on Collins. Okay. And I can only pull from, and I know this was a talking point in this area when we did it, the all-access scrimmage. Okay? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. we met with the staff the day before we televised the scrimmage. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can say this, and not because I've known Jeff a long time, but because I think Jeff as the defensive coordinator is a little dynamically different than Jeff as the head coach. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. He had results at Mississippi State. He had results at Florida. When he's been a defensive coordinator, he's been quite good. Yeah. Okay. I was impressed, okay, with the one factor that Travis Shaw, who was hyped up coming out of high school, right, Joe? Mm -hmm. Travis Shaw looked a lot different in the spring. Both Roddy and I and, and David Hale was with us on that production. We talked about if Travis Shaw, Jeff Collins had tapped into Travis Shaw, if Travis Shaw on the defensive line comes out fire breathing from the jump, yeah, that changes the entire cosmetics of their defensive line. Because now you have a guy playing zero one or two technique who can be a factor. And it also frees up Cayman Rucker. It frees up other guys on the other side. 
I think in the secondary, in all honesty, I think in the secondary, they got a strong chance. I mean, look, they've got guys back there who have played. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't care what happens. Eventually, the maturation process and the development process takes shape. But again, to your point, you got to see it on the field. I got to see it on the field. You talk about maturation. You talk about development. I know I'm going to get that at NC State. I know I'm going to get that out of Dave Dorn's coaching record. staff. They have they a track, track record. record of those types of things. Uh, that's the identity that NC State has built. But again, I get back to what I said earlier about NC State. We have been sold, whether you're an NC State fan or when we go to these media events, right. we have been sold, hey, we're going to be a little bit different offensively. We're going to do X, Y, Z, right? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen it because that's kind of what NC State is. And I've been screaming this the last couple of years. The way NC State wants to win games is the feature, not a bug. It's to get out to 17 points, and then that should be enough, baby. Well, it's going to be different now. It's going to be different. And I, I, I am really, really curious to see just how different. They clearly have made an emphasis and used their financial pool mm -hmm. to get better on that end after what was an adventure offensively last year. Yeah, it was that they still managed to get through and have a really good season. Yeah. And they created a star. Yep. Who now is going to be one and a half on every snap, oh, yeah. no matter where he lines up. Oh, yeah. And to be honest with you, he might be one of the most electric players in the league as the season starts. It all comes down to Grayson McCall's health, too, because I know uh, at Coastal Carolina, yeah, he dealt with some times. concussion issues at he, times. I'll be curious to see if he can have a whole a full healthy season. But I, I think Jordan Waters is also going to be a huge piece for this, too. That's fair. That's fair. This all this football talk. I pulled up the DraftKings app and I wanted to see who the uh, the futures were. Oh boy, yeah, the futures. By the way, if you're a new customer for DraftKings, you bet five dollars, you'll get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets. Uh, you can use those bonus bonus bets on some futures, like I did when we signed up back in March. Right now, Florida State is plus two ninety to win the ACC. Clemson is plus three forty. Okay, I see NC State at plus seven hundred. And so it goes 290, 340 to 700. Uh, Miami's 425, Louisville 650, NC State 700. Wow. Virginia Tech's plus 1200. SMU, our new favorite ACC squad, is plus 1600. Better odds than North Carolina, plus 3500. What's Cal? What's Cal? Cal, <laughs> Cal is plus 8000. What about Stanford? Stanford is plus 40,000. Whoa. I might just put 50 cents down on that. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> of the of the trio, because Joe and I have been talking about this. And I know Luke DeCock, if he's an observer, has this. I think he's got the column ready to go. Does he? If it happens. Okay. He's already written the column. I think he's already written the column for this. <laughs> Which of the new the new trio will actually shock the world and win the ACC? First? It's first. And I say this year. Oh, this year. This oh, year. Oh, come on. This come year. Come on now. Wes. Come on. Tell right now. Even lastly. I mean, Rhett, Rhett's got a team. <laughs> Rhett's got squad, okay? I I just don't, I mean, I, I really, and I tell people this all the time, like, how big a college football fan are you? Are you big enough to go back on YouTube and dig out a game from last year and watch them play? Yeah, no, I'm not that. Okay. No, I'm not that guy. If you are, if. If. So somebody wants to kill time third week in July, right? Yeah. You, you're getting ready for wall-to-wall -wall kickoff on ACC Network. <laughs> so before we get to noon on Monday with the Commissioner's Forum, do this. Go back sometime in the next, what, two weeks, sure. three weeks, yeah, month, and dig up an SMU game from last year. Okay. And they've added players. They are, of course, they been, have money. They've been portal happy. Yes. Um, Preston Stone's really good. Defensively is where their concern is going to be. How about this? Can you envision a scenario where SMU is playing Florida State for the championship? No, cannot. No. No. I can. That's going to be the show. Hey, you, let's go back to what Packer said. Somebody's going to surprise you. It's the NFL, last in the division to winning the division. Just say it. You never yeah, know. I, I, let, let me get Miami <laughs> to that championship game first, can I? <sighs> last time that happened, my dad got depressed. So, Well, here's the thing. 2017, when they got their ass handed to him by Clemson? Yes. But here's the deal. Miami is the one that has kind of both sides of the ball, and, and they found the right guy, Trigger. Okay. Okay. The oh. quarterback the quarterback in, in Coral Gables is the real deal, dude. Wes, you act like I haven't heard that before. Oh, I know that, but this guy, <laughs> this guy is oh, different. Oh, this, this, it's going to be different this time. Man, I've been hearing Joe, that. I understand. And by the way, where is uh, Ernie? 
Uh, my dad is yeah. he's back home. He made it back from Florida. Fernando, he who did, says I'm bad luck, by the way. He is. Yeah. He does say that about it's just you. just terrible. He says that when you're That's, on the call. That is it's slanderous, just, by the way, just, in Fernando. Fact, in fact, if I know you're on certain calls, you know what? There's this app that might help me out. Anyway, go <laughs> ahead. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. New customers, you bet $5, you get $150 in bonus bets. Use that promo code OG24 when you download the DraftKings app. We got UFC 303 coming up, too. You can jump in on all that action on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. You got the light heavyweight title fight on the line, but there's a lot more going on. And again, all with bonus bets. $5, $150 in bonus bets when you use that promo code OG24. Now it's time for some legal Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Or in West Virginia, visit 1-800-GAMBLER.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 and over, age varies by jurisdiction. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. See terms and response. Responsible gaming resources at dkng.co slash MMA. Housekeeping. And housekeeping is brought to you by Enovana. Check them out. Enovana.com. E-N-O-V-A-N-A.com. If you have nests inside your mansion or cash in your Gabbana, get it green clean with Enovana. See, we even have jingles and everything. Wes. I like that. That was solid. I like their jingle, by the way. The jingle's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, big thanks to Bud for that one. And uh, Inovana actually came out to the house yesterday. They always do a great job. In, out, clean. It's awesome. We got the podcast festival coming I'm out. I'm well aware. You're not going to be able to make it to the podcast no. fest. No. That's a bummer. It is a bummer. Shutdown full cast is going to be in the house. Michael Felder and the crew for Hand in the Dirt. So you know it's going to be a rowdy time. Steven Godfrey coming? Yeah. Huge Falcons fan. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a good time. Felder, former Tar Heel. We're going to be there. Um, I'm actually thinking about dusting off an old radio bit for audience participation, bringing back your full of shit, Chilio. <laughs> with live audience participation <laughs> that, for a bottle of bourbon on the line. That would be awesome. I think that's that what we're going to do. Awesome. Um, that should be awesome. That should be fun. So be on the lookout for that. Spencer is worth the time. Oh, Spencer. I think... Brownlow is going to be there. Hayes, obviously, because he runs the Rialto. Yeah. I believe there's going to be a sports Broadway breakout because you have Lauren Brownlow, you got Hayes, you got Ryan Nanny, Celebrity Hot Tub, and you mm. got Holly. They're all big sports Broadway people. Yeah. I just hope with Spencer, we play some, you know, Mario Kart on the Switch or something like hilarious. that. That should be a lot of fun. So go to the Rialto's website, buy your tickets today. Every time I mention the podcast festival, we sell more tickets. Call and response. It. We love that. And of course, the podcast festival brought to you by Breeze Through. Wes already hit that coffee. Jilly will be so disappointed I did not get the bold. Oh, that's, yeah, that's his. But he, again, with Jilly and coffee, he just likes it. He likes sludge. By the way, full tank and the coffee today. Love full that. Full tank of gas. Look at you supporting the sponsors. Oh, I gotta be there. Go to breezethrough.com, download the app. You can save money on gas. And of course, get the coffee first thing in the morning. Big thanks to Two Roosters for sponsoring Ovias and Gilio. Have you had time to get ice cream yet? No, maybe on the drive back from the beach. Maybe you can do that. There you go. Uh, they got all sorts of rotating flavors. I'll be curious to see when Gilio gets back what his new favorite flavor of the moment is. <laughs> so go to tworoosters.com. I'm, I'm actually going to be at Two Roosters relatively soon because I, I mentioned this yesterday with Maniscalco. I somehow ended up being the team manager for my kids' travel hockey team. So I travel hockey in the summer. No, 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 no. But we have to start planning stuff oh. and we have to like, I have to, I'm in charge of putting together like a team meetup. Okay. So all the kids, all Great. the new kids sure. know each yeah. other. Hey, everybody come, what? To, come over to the obvious house and no, play no, video no, no, games. No, no. Screw that. We're going to two roosters. We'll load you up on ice cream and then we'll send you home with your parents. Hype you up on the sugar train. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Let's go. <laughs> So go to two, look, two roosters. Two roosters is for the children. They yeah. do a lot of great stuff. Sure they'll, it is. they'll cater stuff for your school. Okay. The kids love it, man. So go to two roosters.com to find out more. Big thanks to Longleaf Swine for sponsoring us. Check them out. Longleafswine.com. Uh, maybe you don't feel like going out because it's super, super hot. No big deal. Just order online. You could take it home. Heck, they'll even cater an event for you. Um, so head on over to longleafswine.com. And maybe you've been inspired by something you ate at Longleaf Swine. You're like, you know what? I'm going to do brisket. You get that meat at Butcher's Market. That's where you go. Go Look to thebutchersmarkets.com. What's that? Look at you tying sponsors.
Love yeah, it. I mean, I might have been doing this for a while, so yeah. I know how to do it's the not your first rodeo. I know how to do the corporate synergy with the best of them. So go to thebutchersmarkets.com. You're looking for Fourth of July easy things to grill. They've got it. They got all sorts of marinated steak tips. They got pre-made burgers, not just of your typical eighty-five fifteen. They got wagyu burgers, Wes. Jeez, let's go! Oof. Very excited about that. So again, thebutchersmarkets.com. Rumor has it the NBA draft is tonight. Did you know that, Wes? Yeah, the Hawks have the first pick. Hey, what are your Hawks going to do? They're going to pick my some, Hawks. My some... son is a huge Hawks. Oh, fan. okay. They're going to pick some European guy I've never heard of, right? Probably. And that's what I was. I was wondering as I was looking ahead, and you know, for the week, like, oh, what's going on? You know, peak summer protocols, and I was like, oh yeah, the NBA draft is taking place, and there is zero buzz around it yeah. outside of what are they going to do with Bronny James? Is he going to get drafted late tonight? Into the draft. Of course they have because he's the compelling watch, which is pretty wild because in any other circumstances, Bronny James is not getting drafted on night one. Maybe he's not even getting drafted in day two, right? Like a, like a fringe ACC guy. I thought he would go to Duquesne and play a year for LeBron's former high school teammate. Oh. That would be funny. And then go to the draft. But that would be funny. I, I, look, here's the thing. First of all, in the Atlanta area, when the Hawks won the lottery, yeah, it was like the, the response was, of course we won the lottery. It's the worst year the draft <laughs> has seen. Draft. The people that brought you Priest Lauderdale in the first round. <laughs> the people that brought you... Wow. You know, Bill Willoughby in the first round. The people that... Are you playing a game of let's remember some guys? Because The Hawks West. drafted Julius Irving. Yeah. He never played for Never him. played. Right. Right. Uh, the Hawks drafted David Thompson. Never, never played. played for him. So, sure. By the way, is Olivier Saar Alex Saar's brother? I don't know, man. I don't know. I was, lo then, I was, lo I was looking at the... Uh, and that's... And that, it was... If you're watching on YouTube, I'm kind of giving a shoulder shrug is because I, 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 I went over the names and I honestly just do not know. And I was looking, I'm like, all right, well, there's some ACC names that I remember. And you know, I think Jared McCain is probably the guy that will be the first ACC player taken. Maybe. Yeah, probably. I mean, maybe. Um, it's such a foreign territory. And I'm not saying that because that's where the players are from. It's just such this unknown. It's because the NBA and college basketball are two completely different products now. With, with NIL... And what we're seeing with House right. and the payments that are going to be taking place. Why, sure. And Armando Baycott can play Correct. as as much as he did for Carolina. Yeah. Uh, why there was a discussion about R.J. Davis, will he or won't he? Well, if you're R.J. Davis, are you going to be a fringe second round guy? Mm -hmm. Or do you come back with a nice NIL package and you know ball out again? Yeah. Just like Armando Baycott did the year before. Harrison Ingram at UNC had the same decision to make. Did he not? No question. So, and but, Harrison Ingram, I hope, gets drafted because I thought another year in college basketball would help him. But, you know, then again, if he's – P.J. Hall, the same thing. P.J. Hall had a year left. He's going to be a second-round guy. Probably so. But, see, and I learned this from working with Bayheim last year, Joe. Yeah. If you're a second-round guy and you get a, you know, you get a deal that's guaranteed, it's, it's not as guaranteed as a first-round deal. No, it's not. But you get a second-round deal, that's enough to get you started. Yeah. Um, you get a two way, you're at Jose Alvarado. I mean, Jose Alvarado has been a contributor for the Pelicans, started out and got a two way deal. Yeah. Uh, ended up that Hunter Tyson, who played at Clemson last year. My son was a GA there for a couple of years, as you know. So he got to know those guys. They mm -hmm. ended up on two way deals. Hunter Tyson's on their roster, on Denver's roster last year in the playoffs. So, I, I, or this year rather. So I think the idea of getting it started still applies. But to me, and I told Corey Alexander this, when we're working together, he does a lot of NBA stuff for ESPN radio in the playoffs. Right. I, it's just such an evaluation piece now that I don't, I don't understand the correlation anymore because what somebody's looking for and what I see in the college game, two totally different things. it's two, it's two solar systems yep. now. It's two totally different things. That's not necessarily a bad thing. No, but because it's different I've, than when we were 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and we had a feel for it. Yeah. So the, you know, look, there's a there's a there's a larger debate around whether or not there should be um, limits on 
who can enter the draft. Right? I agree. You know, right. like in the NFL and college, I think they work in concert together with the three year eligibility totally requirement. Agree. Totally. Agree. And it it really creates a 365 day out of the year football conversation. Right. And those who are super, super into football can identify who the next quarterback who's going to be trafficking in hope. Yep. And, and it works. It works for everybody. Everything gets lifted up. That's correct. There was a time where that was also the case for college basketball and the NBA. Mm -hmm. You had familiarity with these guys for at least three years. They had big one shining moments in the NCAA tournament. And then you could see it translate over. If you don't believe me, all you got to do is look at what's happened with women's college basketball and the WNBA. Correct. There is a carryover effect with Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese and others, but those are the main two. There's your Larry Bird and Magic Johnson one for one. And they cross over and there's this built-in rivalry mm -hmm. that has now carried over and has brought more eyeballs to the WNBA yep. and everybody wins. But because of the c collective bargaining agreement, the different needs of the NBA, the NCAA getting in its own way, right. basically looking at the NBA as an adversary, not necessarily somebody they should work in concert with, they have created this schism that creates two different basketball products. And I can see here and go, man, I've seen a couple of years of Kyle Filipowski. He'll be lucky to get drafted somewhere in the 30s at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, same with Jared McCain. I could see the talent in Jared McCain, but again, he'll be lucky to get drafted somewhere late in the first round. I was looking at one of the mock drafts. Sure. Um, was it a uh, guy from France for the Hawks tonight? Olivier. It's Alex Sar. I want to call no, him Alex, Olivier all the time. Well, I was going to say. Uh, oh, you're talking this, about the other guy. The Zachary. Zachariah. Zachariah. What's the guy's name? I don't know his last name. Yeah, uh, Billis said it Lissature? last night. Billis said it last night, and I'm like, good for Jay. You yeah. got Alex Sar, right. France. Uh, I think the first, you got a G League Ignite guy in uh, Matis Buzelis. Um, yeah, he played in the um, he played in the G League uh, All-Star game or whatever it was last year. Ron Holland, another G League Ignite guy. So then I start seeing, I think the first of the mock draft that I'm looking at, this is from the ringers. Kid from, Kevin, Dayton, kid from Dayton is in the top 10, I think. Right? Okay. Ke Kevin O'Connor's mock draft over at the ringer. The first actual, yeah, Reed Shepard would be the third pick in the draft. I got to tell you this. I'm a huge Reed Shepard guy. I did Kentucky Louisville last year. Yeah. Reed Shepard was really good. Now, speaking of the products. If we recognize that the NBA and college basketball are just they're on their own paths doing their own thing. Right. Based on Ross Dellinger's reporting that I read on Monday in Yahoo Sports, it seems that in college basketball, they really want to separate that too. Uh, the Power Four, which I guess is what it's called now, uh, had met up with as Ross Dellinger. Does that mean the American wants to be the fifth now? I guess. I okay. can't keep track. I can't keep track. But Ross Dellinger... Sorry, that was a cheap, low-hanging fruit shot. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ross Dellinger referred to the non-Power 5 schools as the other 28. They did. That were there in Naples, Florida. At the in Ritz the lobby. Carlton. They were in the lobby. They were in the lobby, right? Yeah. And clearly, the Power 4, with all the autonomy, wants to do their own thing. They want to expand the NCAA tournament. They want to expand the NCAA tournament not to bring in more automatic qualifiers or more mid-majors. They want more opportunities for their quote unquote competitive teams to go ahead and, and get into the NCAA tournament. And, and the NCAA would be receptive to that because why? Makes more money. Makes more money, I guess. And you know what the more money does? Helps pay off the settlement. Here's but by the way, the settlement, which is now all the reporting is starting to trickle out, and that's what's impressive about what happened this week with Ross Dellinger's story. Yeah. Now we're starting to, and then Matt Brown's follow up on his extra point newsletter. Yeah, I was reading that. I was reading that last night. Okay, because so, he was talking. He Ross's piece is coming mostly from the Power, the power four. four perspective. Matt's is coming the other way, and some of the quotes that were in there from like the Big Sky Commissioner and some unnamed ads were very much like, "We didn't even think about showing up because what's it going to be for us?" Or "I'm not going to pay." I think it was from the Big Sky Commissioner. Mm -hmm. I'm paraphrasing paraphrasing the quote here, but essentially he was saying. I'm not about to have my revenue cut to pay for their players that have right. come through. That's and correct. I don't blame him for that. I think this is slowly but surely we're getting to the tipping point. Of a breakaway? We're going to have to do something because the settlement is being driven yeah. by the bigger rosters, by the bigger institutions, yeah. by the bigger budgets. And that's where Matt's newsletter reporting yesterday if you tie it with what Dellinger did, 
you start to see the checks and the balances here. When you hear somebody from a non-Power 4 league or institution say something about 20% of my budget, Joe? Well, that was weird. Sorry. So what I'm getting at is if we're getting to this point, it's fair for those conferences downstairs, uh, as I call now, I'm getting ready to start calling them the lobby conferences because <laughs> they were in the lobby. They're in the lobby. And the other four guys were upstairs talking to Charlie Baker. Yeah. So where's the NCAA in this? And we were going to get here eventually anyway, right? Those four conferences and the NCAA. I'm, it might, I might be a little too um, obnoxious with what I'm about to say, but it's all, there, there's this concern about budgets. We need more money. We have to find revenue sources. Brett Yormark's out here talking about renaming their conference because sure. of the money. I right. know Jim Phillips was asked about that last week at the APSE uh, in terms of private equity. They're, they're thinking about selling off chunks I, of their conferences and athletic departments it's to private equity. It's a dangerous road. And I'm sitting here thinking to myself, okay, you want all this money. Right. You have no fiscal responsibility ever. Every time you get money, you don't know how to spend it or you're overspending. For instance, why is this taking place at a Ritz-Carlton in Naples, Florida? You're talking about the NCAA. Yeah. Yeah. Why is it taking place there? Exactly. Lot, like, you travel a lot. Is Naples, Florida easy to get to? No. Is Amelia Island easy to get to? Mm, no. You go to Jacksonville and get in a rental car. Okay. I mean, some of these guys are probably fly, flying private, too, or the rental some. car. Oh, so you, you got to bring all your staff, too. So it's not just a rental car. It's not just Jim Phillips pulling up to Jacksonville, going to Hertz, <laughs> seeing that he has his upgraded sedan sure. ready for him, and he drives to no, the island. Mean. I know what you mean. No, he's got to bring the entirety right. of, of the Charlotte office with him. Sure. Why are you doing it there? Oh, man, you know, we, we just got to have to find more money. We have to compete. We have to be able to do these things. Except you guys are living like kings. It doesn't right. make any sense to me. They're showing no fiscal responsibility on any front. So why should I believe them when they say, oh, this is for the good of the game. No, it's for the good of your bank account. You don't know how to spend your money. I think the I think the element we're running into, the bigger picture in major college athletics is going to be the decision that has to be made by the institution. And you and I both know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I know that's not very, you know, sexy talk in college athletics. Everybody wants to hear about expansion and realignment and playoffs and money. And, that's what drives the YouTube and, and people, stuff, man. And people like the NIL. And, yeah. you know, now we got, you know, radical commentary in the off season about, you know, college realignment. I mean, I've heard the wildest stuff in the solar system this off season. How is that any different from any other off season? Well, but this is crazy stuff. Oh, okay. okay. I mean, like some of the realignment jazz has just been <laughs> off the hook. But that's what we need in the summer to keep, yeah. to keep the needles but bouncing. To me, man. this comes back to, and I, I hate to be the guy that that calls these guys out. But this comes back to the chancellors and presidents letting yeah. Mark Emmer create this open door that you have now. You cannot possibly shut. You it, have to now go back and reset your entire structure, and nobody wants to grab it and take the lead on it. It's not Mark Emmer's fault. It is the president's and the chancellor's fault. Those were the For, guys that that's employed what they him. wanted. The that's free, what they wanted. The COVID bonus years. You know where I'm going with this. Yep. I was okay with the portal. You want freedom of movement for student athletes? That's fine. Then you doubled down and went two bonus years on COVID. Because it looked good. Now we've gone. We're not going to deal with NIL. We're going to push that to each state. Yeah. That right there. I mean, okay. How do we reel all that back in? And I'm not going to say you got to reel it back in because you can't. But you got to calm the landscape. I mean, professional leagues have a salary cap. They have some sort of agreement in place. Mm -hmm. They've got... We have none of that in college athletics. I'm going to be curious to see what they end up getting out of because the, the NCAA tournament is going to expand. That's it's it, going to happen. It's going to happen. There's going to be a West Coast version of Dayton, Ohio. Okay, but so the question is, what is the makeup going to look like? It's just more automatic bids. Is it more at large bids? It's going to be more at large okay, bids. So the, it's going to have to be. So the at large bids and the way I kind of look at this. Okay, so the SEC, Greg Sankey, congratulations. You have been whining about the NCAA tournament and having more access. Last time I checked, your league continues to be fodder for the ones you don't want in anymore. And I think sometimes people tend to forget what the NCAA tournament is about, what the draw of the NCAA tournament it's is about. It's the upsets. The upsets. Right. So now... Like I don't, I don't accuse Greg Sankey of playing 4D chess here. 
I don't think he's thinking about it going, well, if we add more of our teams to get beat by the Oaklands of the world, well, then we'll just make more money. No, right. no, 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 no. They're looking at it from, we don't want the Oaklands of the world in it, period. And that's probably, you talk about a West Coast version of Dayton. I'm thinking two different kind of tournaments mm-hmm. at this point, just straight up two different kind of per- tournaments. And they can sell it the way they want it, just like they do with the college football playoff. I know that's something that Matt Brown wrote about. And we'll close the conversation on that. That we're essentially getting to a tiered version of college athletics. No question. That's that it ha- I don't want it to go there because the entire beauty of college athletics is while we understand everybody's different and there's different budgets, the tournament still allows for upsets. That at the end of the day, you might have a bigger budget, you might have this recruiting tactic, you might have all, all this other kind of stuff. But on one day in March, you get that kind of excitement. Yep. That's the draw. But the way Matt Brown kind of sees things and talking to all these administrators, I agree with him. We're probably headed to tiers and not just for the college football playoff stuff. And the NCAA tournament, and I'm going to go English soccer on you. Ready? All right. Okay. We're going to have the Premier League. We're going to have the championship. Yeah. We're going to have, you know what, League One, all the way down. Yep. Okay. And at the end, somewhere along the way, the NCAA basketball tournament becomes what? The FA Cup? Something like that, yeah. Where some small club can go beat Man City. Right, hey, I mean, man. You know, you know me. Where Luton Town can get Man City. You know me. I think you keep the NCAA tournament as it is. What you need to do, like the NBA did, is have an in-season tournament. You want to get, uh, Coll- and that goes to the other point, real quick. College basketball better find a recovery point early in the year because nobody watches until after the Super Bowl. Nope. Now we watch because this is our yeah, heritage and our history here. Yeah, it's what we do. And There's we the- watch games in early November and December. But America does not watch until after the Super Bowl, and they really only watch for three and a half weeks. There is a there or is two a, and a half weeks. there is a sweet spot. Call me crazy, but there is a sweet spot that happens between the NFL conference championship games yep. and the Super Bowl. Absolutely. Why you do not, if I'm the ACC, run a tournament. That helps to say, because if you're not going to invite everybody to the actual ACC tournament anymore, because remember, we've got too many teams now, right? you could set up a feeder where, hey, regardless of what happens, you automatically go to the ACC tournament. Right. um, And you get a nice seed at the ACC tournament for winning this particular thing. You got to think creatively is the point. And you can like, oh, but what about this? But what about this? Well, the alternative to all of your questions is nobody's talking about you. Nobody gives a shit about you. And that's worse than trying to work out the logistics of some sort of mid-season. Man, I've called it before. I don't even. It's sitting right there, Wes. You do something in Greensboro. You do something in Madison Square Garden. You're never getting to Madison Square Garden for the tournament. Correct. Because the Big East owns that building. That's right. It's never leaving. Mm -hmm. I look back at our conversations 10, 15 years ago where it's like, oh, yeah, we're just going to go to the Madison Square Garden. And I laughed. There's no freaking way. The Big Ten tried it. And they said, nah, it ain't worth it. It's, this ain't worth well, it. And, and here's the thing. The ACC went to Brooklyn, what, three times? Ain't worth it. And now you're kind of thinking, ah, we may never go to Brooklyn again. And that's fine. But there's still a way to work in the Big East, sure old Big East is. for Madison Square Garden, and do something at Greensboro at the same time. I, I am but, not opposed to the bear me out here. Brazo, I know folks. you're listening. Come on. Hey, bear me out, young folks. Yeah. I'm not opposed to taking the format of the Dixie Classic yeah. and playing it the weekend after the ACC football championship game. That'd be perfect. Free, who needs fish bait solutions when you've got Ovias and Durham? That has any of that written on it? We uh, no, we, we're not going to have it. We're not going to have it. But I do know this: we would charge less than fish bait solutions. <laughs> uh, big thanks to Hometown Realty. Speaking of um, things being competitive and saving money and everything else, the home market's really, really heated right now. So you got to buy and sell with confidence, and that's where Hometown Realty comes into play. Check them out, myhtr.com. A lot of new construction. Wes, I know every time you're back in the triangle, you're it's going, oh, look, a new, a new development has showed up. Can I just say that riding in here to the Eford Studios today, yeah. I took the back way down Wade Avenue, and man, it was totally it was, different. Man. It was almost like a time machine. I said, man, I remember, wait, where did that, what, uh, what happened gone. there? Yeah. So with all these things going on, you can get in front with Hometown Realty. Check them out, myhtr.com. Let's say you bought a house. Uh, maybe the rates came down. You refinance. You can close that at Whitaker and Hamer. Check them out. WH.lawyer, attorneys and counselors at law. 
Uh, I don't think Jillio's going to need the services of Whitaker Can and I Hammer. Can I get their number as I travel through the state, by the way, just in case? <laughs> you never know. <laughs> okay. You never know. So check them out. WH. Dot lawyer. I'm actually going to drop by Nature's Relief Hemp Store either today or tomorrow because I'm out of my sleep gummies. They're so clutch. Nature's Relief Hemp Store, R-E-L-E-A-F, hempstore.com. You've got questions. You go to various states. They've got different rules. Like I was in Florida. I kept seeing signs that say no medical card required. I'm like, what the heck is this all about? So you're like, well, that's here. What am I getting? You don't know where this stuff is coming from. Nature's Relief Hemp Store has the answers for you. So go again, check them out. Nature's Relief Hemp Store.com and get your questions answered. Wes, are you familiar with the lightning round? Uh, I think I've heard it once or twice. Okay. All right. Um, you've heard the ridiculous monster voice? Yes. And how quickly this segment moves? Yeah. yeah, let's do it. The lightning round. The ancillary elements of the OG podcast yeah. have really, really. Oh gone yeah, north. really. I gone mean, north. we're just ballers on a budget. <laughs> I, I have to. I, mean, I have to. Uh, I have to update the lightning round because we have a countrified version of the lightning round. Why didn't I get that? Oh, because I, because like I just got back from vacation. Okay, man. I'm, 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 no, never hold on mind. a second. I have it on never my mind. phone. No, I, I no, want no. you to hear it because you haven't heard it yet. Have We're you? up against a clock. Oh wait, <laughs> what clock? <laughs> uh, there's a oh, there's a Bruce Springsteen version too. How about the country version? Uh, let's see. This is the. Is this more like Luke Bryan or is this more like you Zach Bryan? You tell me. Uh, that's more that's more Porter Wagner perhaps than <laughs> Zach Bryan there's a Bruce because Spr- I don't need the Bruce Bruce well because Joe when Joe gets back I'm going to get what his thoughts are that's pretty good I actually like that one <laughs> There's also Gilio, a, however, he's might, going to break this table in half when he hears that. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Probably. He yeah. he spent some quality jersey time. All right. Lightning round item number one. So the Texas A and M coach, after Elon Grad, he's an Elon guy. Jim Schlossnagel, mighty Elon Grad. Oh man, I wish I had the Phoenix noise that Alec Campbell used to play back <laughs> in the day. I got talked to Alec like, "Hey man, where'd, where'd you get that Phoenix wait, noise?" Wait, Schloss was a fighting Christian. Like oh, me. that old, huh? Not that Phoenix. Yeah, Schloss okay. is a fighting Christian. So Schloss, uh, they get beat by Tennessee in the College World Series. They did, yes. yes. There's been conversations about whether or not he was going to take the vacant Texas job. Apparently rumored for a couple of weeks in the Longhorn State. So this is Our what Sch- Lone Star State, only run by the Longhorns. So this is what Schloss says uh, after the game, after the loss, when somebody asked him. Coach, with respect to the difficult outcome tonight, but with the rumors circulating today about a specific job opening, what do you have to say about your future in Aggieland? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's pretty selfish of you to ask me that question, to be honest with you. Uh, but my, uh, I left my family to be the coach at Texas A&M. I took the job at Texas A&M to never take another job again. And that hasn't changed in my mind. Um and that's unfair to talk about something like that. That'd be like you asking Montgomery if he's going to sign in the draft. But I understand you got to ask the question. But I gave up a big part of my life to come take this job. And I've poured every ounce of my soul in this job. And I've given this job every single ounce I can possibly give it. So write that. Coach, thank you very much. He got up and he left. And then he literally left for the Texas job the next day. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> Why do coaches do this? Uh, you know, you could say I'm. I don't want to answer that question. Uh, yeah, exactly. It's now's not the time. Like Roy, when Roy said I could give a shit about uh, North Carolina, Carolina right now. Yeah, yeah. Bonnie Bernstein double he, clutched the mic and yeah. he meant that. He like did. right now, right now, right now. I don't give a shit about North Carolina because I just lost. Right. That was, I mean, it, it's an infamous quote. All of, But what Roy did not mean, I'm not taking that job. It's just, right. I'm not thinking about that right now, man. Correct. He could have said it that way. Instead, he does that. He doubles down and then he takes off for Texas. Well, and here's, here's the, you know, here's the, 
kind of the dirt and the details. Yeah, Chris Del yeah. Conte was the AD at TCU when Jim Schlossnagel became the baseball coach at TCU. Yeah. Uh, Schloss is a hell of a baseball coach. He's sure. a hell of a college baseball coach. There's no question Del Conte is a closer as an AD. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, he goes and gets guys. Chris Beard aside, think about what he did when he took Chris Beard from Texas Tech and brought him to Texas. Right, right. Think about what he did with Sark. Think mm-hmm. about where Chris Conte is now in terms of just a lot of the elements involved here. I, Schlossnagel handles it awful. I mean, it's brutal. Yeah. You can't you can't answer the question that way. Now, with some of the back end of this story coming out, Joe, it only gets worse. Was it like a couple of weeks, right? I spent more than a couple More than a couple of weeks? Okay. Yeah, it's been about a month. Jeez. Feels like a month. Okay. Lightning round item number two. Some would say it's the best you've ever sounded, by the way. Well, when I go monster voice? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's pretty good. So apparently the uh, the New York Knicks just want to be Villanova. Another trade. They Mikhail another Bridges, trade. baby. Let's go. It's another trade. By the way, it's it's so, bordering on Herschel Walker trade. Look yeah, at all the picks. Four unprotected first round picks. Correct. For Mikhail Bridges. What? I just that's why I'm not in the NBA world. Right okay, now. cool. So Bridges uh joins his teammates. Yeah. Jalen Brunson, Josh Hart, and Dante DiVincenzo. What's next? Didn't, Jay Wright. Didn't know. <laughs> I just like to why not be, stir the pot. That, that would be hilarious. Why not stir the pot? Didn't the didn't the Pelicans try this with a bunch of Duke guys once? I don't think this is same. It's probably not the same thing. It was a, it was a collection of Duke guys, yeah, including new uh, LA Lakers head coach JJ Redick. Did you see where apparently? I guess JJ said this that Coach K kind of like the master guy behind the scenes with this kind of stuff. He was a consultant for the Lakers. If he couldn't, if he didn't take the job twenty years ago, might as well help. Fulfill the job with another Duke guy. I can't. Apparently, he said, "Like, don't even bother with the, with the Hornets job." So, Coach K, man, he still got his fingers. He's still manipulating. And who's things. surprised? Oh, I'm not surprised. Okay. So, the guys in NBA. We're coming guys, up on the one year anniversary of Rivals Reunited being produced, so I have to be, you know. Oh I'm, yeah, you, I'm still in my statue. That's right. You want to do Rivals Reunited to Electric Boogaloo? <laughs> I see you. Crush groove. I see I see you. I totally see where you're getting at. Lightning round item number uh, three. 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 Yeah. So EA Sports has uh, NCAA football 25 yeah, coming out soon. Yeah, they do. Yes, they do. Are you buying it? Oh, absolutely. What's the, so you play, did you play 14 back in the day? Oh, absolutely. Dude, I don't know, man. Well, A, I got to get a new system because it's not for the Switch. It's no, not no, you're going to have to upgrade to the, you need to go PS5 or you're going to have to go to the uh, X or S I got my kids. Xbox. I got my kids old Xbox S that I might be, maybe it's another OG expense. Maybe we buy it, a PS5. It should be an OG expense because you can then have Gilio. You can recreate the plays, important plays of each week it. and have Gilio talk break, about schemes. We'll break it. We'll yellow pad. NCAA 25. I see where you're going with this. By the way, there's a lot of content online about the game. And I give I give Tiburon and EA a lot of credit. They brought a lot of people in. Andy Staples was one of the guys. He's I one think. of the guys, right? Um, Matt Brown went down there. We talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. A bunch of guys. I think they brought almost two dozen people in to let them preview kind of what the elements were. We talked to Matt shortly after the embargo was lifted right. to talk about his experience. And I give credit to EA because they know how to get the college football audiences going because ahead of the launch of the game, which were about a month out, they released... Oh, we're less than a month. It's the 16th, I think. They released their toughest college football yeah, stadium list. Yeah, so this is, according to EA Sports, sure. the toughest college football stadiums. Texas A&M is number one, Alabama two, LSU three, Ohio State four, Georgia five. Agree or disagree with that order? I find it interesting that LSU is not one. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would also say, too, that where's Utah on that list? I don't. I, it's just the five. It's just the five. Okay. I've seen a list. I thought last night on my timeline that might have been the full list, but... See to me, Utah is a is a pit. I Ohio State, I'm not so sure about. No. Well, I mean, it's tough. A and M one. I mean, sure. Mike Elko is clearly taking that on the recruiting trail. Oh sure, <laughs> See? absolutely. Video game says we're incredibly tough um, to play. I think I saw Clemson at twelve. That was the highest rated ACC team. I didn't see the full list, but which is what do you think is the highest? What should be the highest rated ACC stadium? It's SMU, right? Stop it. I'm kidding. Stanford. It's the travel. That's Stop. what makes it really, really tough. Stop. The highest, the toughest one for me? Yeah. I think it's a Clemson, Virginia Tech, NC State argument. I think it's Florida a, State when they're playing well. Florida State is depending. 
Um, I still think that Clemson is the most difficult place to play in the Man, ACC. I, this, this here, you you will have. I mean, I'm telling you, doing production meetings of teams that come to Raleigh. Yeah. This is this is a place that I think is is off the hook on game night, game okay. day, and game night. Next, la- last item on the lightning round. What do we have here? Oh yeah, we're gonna take a hockey break. Let's take a break. Let's take a hockey break. <laughs> You, you like the you like the Jonathan Rand jingle there? It's pretty good. I'm gonna go to Happy and Hail when we're done uh, today because I still need to detox after my Florida trip of eating nothing but rich food on top of rich food on top oh of rich food. Gosh. Dude, it was it was a lot, man. It was a lot. But Happy and Hail, uh, not only is it just good, clean, whole food, it it's filling. It's good. It's got protein. They got smoothies. It got all sorts of stuff. So download the app today. You get all sorts of perks with that as well. Uh, The hockey break is for the Florida Panthers as they were celebrating Mm. their um, they were celebrating the Stanley Cup yesterday. This is from Jeff Darlington, one of your colleagues over at ESPN, uh, who's based down in Florida. Yeah. And And uh, Jeff Jeff does a lot. Jeff does do a lot. Jeff gets a lot done. He does get a lot done. And he's got pictures from the Stanley Cup showing up at the uh, Fort Lauderdale Beach Bar called Elbow Room. So there was a video that I saw. Wait a second. There used to be an Elbow Room in Greenville. It's. I don't think it's this. I don't think it's a chain. That was Halloween night. Oh boy, forty some years ago. We got. We got. We got Halloween stories with West Durham to get into. Ah, just one. Just but, all right. Maybe we another still day. made it to class, so it's hey, no problem. That's all that matters, man. Yeah. That's all that matters. But no, I saw. I think it was Matthew Kachuk who was pouring beer from the second story of Elbow Room into down to the cup, beer, then pouring the beer out of the cup down to the crowd for people to drink, and then they washed it off in the Atlantic Ocean. The cup. This is what I love about hockey, man. I get that college football, you get to eat a Pop-Tart. It was all-time classic. Sure. But when the Stanley Cup is parading around town, man, it is an event. And have you ever talked to the keeper of the cup? The guy who has no. to go along? No. Dude. I bet. It is a fascinating conversation. The gal to write the book. I don't think he's allowed to. Well, you know, back in the 80s, it was at the bottom of Mario Lemieux's pool at the team party. Yes. Well, see, I always thought if the Stanley Cup was at the bottom of Mario Lemieux's pool, well, that that, that can't possibly be allowed. And now, <laughs> did you see the video last week of Bryson DeChambeau walking down the street in Nashville carrying no, the U.S. Open trophy? I didn't see that. Carrying the U.S. Open trophy into some live party for sponsors oh, in Nashville. Okay, they had just money, walked clearly. down the street, hugged a girl, and kept walking, carrying the U.S. Open trophy like it was this backpack I've got here. I love it. I love so, it. So the Stanley Cup, I, and look, I, I know I don't know what it was like here. Did it see some things here? I it did a lot of traveling. I went to one Stanley Cup party. Um, you're familiar with Mike Sunheim. And Kyle yeah, Hanlon. Sure. Yeah, good guys. Yeah, so Mike Sunheim's still with the Carolina sure Hurricanes. Is, yeah. uh, he's moved up. He's got some fancier VP title these days. Nonetheless, very nice job. But a very, very nice guy. Yeah. And uh, they, I went to their combined party with the Stanley Cup. They took it to Linda's in Chapel Hill. Okay. And nice. we went downstairs in Linda's drinking the worst possible beer out of the Stanley Cup. Because sure. that's, what, that's what you do. But if Jillio were here, he wanted to talk about Mark Messier scores and how it was never the same after that. Uh, Cause like, I think it got like dented or something, but they have protocols to fix it and everything else. Yeah. So every time we've talked to the, the keeper of the cup, there are some stories he's willing to tell. And there are some stories where he's like, nah, I can't talk about that. So there's one cup. Yes. No, there's multiple cups. There's multiple cups. There is. Yeah. Cause there's like one in the hockey hall of fame too, but the one that you see, traveling around that's the cup the one that paul maurice held up the other night that's is the, the same one that's that was the at one Linda's. yep that's the one okay it's seen some things man seen some things big thanks to mosquito authority pest authority it is gross out right now uh you don't want to make it even worse by having mosquitoes bite you so you get bugsbite.com to come out and do that mosquito treatment it's really really good stuff inside your house as well with pest authorities, so check them out, bugsbite.com. Also, big thanks to Roback. I know West Durham is a stay-ready all-star. You never know when you might be out on the golf course. So use that promo code OG20. OG20, dog, I got you. Now we're talking. I was rocking the shorts down in Florida. They were they absolutely were as advertised. So again, check them out, roback.com. Use that promo code OG20 to save 20% off your order. Also, thanks to Matt Davis over at State Farm. Check him out online at insuregarner.com, voginsurance.com, or call him directly because, yes, 
this insurance company, this agent, that office, real humans that you can talk to <laughs> with a local area code. What a concept. 919-779-8277. Let's get out of here on some Hey oh, Joe yes. questions. Yes. Hey, Joe, brought to you by Crank Arm. Check them out. Crank Arm Brewing downtown Raleigh. Great space. A whole bunch of different styles of beer. They're all great. And you can buy them at the butcher's market because, Wes, we're all about corporate synergy. Our corporate champions working together hand in hand. Teddy K. That's what it's all about. Teddy K. I actually have a Hey, Joe, question for you. Okay. Because you travel a lot. I do. How often are you on the road? Oh, geez. How often are you on a plane? Oh, my God. (laughs) Uh, This week, (laughs) twice. Next week, not on a plane. Week after that, not on a plane. Then I'll be on four planes in two weeks. Okay. And then from mid-August on, cancel. I'm on a plane at least once a week in mid-August till mid-March. So I used to subscribe to GQ back in the day. Oh, yeah. And um, I just don't have time to read it anymore. I canceled my subscription years ago, but I still get emails from sure. GQ. Trying to like, hey, read the story, read the story. So yesterday, I got an email notification from GQ, from their newsletter. Here are the stories that are coming on. Okay. And the one that pulled me in was why men are, quote, raw-dogging flights. Raw-dogging flights? Is yeah. that like the skip-lag things? No. Oh. Story you know about skip-lagging, right? What's skip-lagging? Skip-lagging is when you... um, well, Travel hack. Yeah. You book a fare to, let's say you're going to go Raleigh-Durham... You're going to connect through Chicago. You want to go Raleigh-Durham to, let's say, Atlanta. But the fare from Raleigh-Durham to Atlanta is X. Well, if you book Raleigh-Durham to Panama City, yeah. the fare drops like $200 because you're going to Panama City. But the, then you don't get on the flight. You don't get on the Panama City part from Atlanta. You just go. You want to go to Atlanta, but you book to Panama City. Oh. You have to book one-way tickets. It's called skip lagging. That is a travel hack. It's a big travel hack, and airlines will, if they catch on to your vibe, <laughs> they get, will bury you. They'll get you. Oh, has yeah. that happened to you yet? No, no, no. I don't do it. Oh, you don't. Oh, you don't do it. You I just don't heard do about it. it. I don't do it anymore. Ah, <laughs> yeah, different expense card these days. No, I. Uh, no, I'm. I'm straight loyal to the. Uh, to the wedge. Okay, as they say I'm a Delta guy. Yeah, I've actually found myself being a Delta guy as of yeah. late too. The app, honestly, I'm a Southwest or Delta guy. That's what it comes down to. I get it. So this is a 26... Raw dogging is what? So it reads like this. A 26-year-old Londoner named West who asked... West. With a T. With a T. Who asked to use only his first name. Went viral back in May when he posted about his decision to forego any entertainment and pass a seven-hour trip watching the flight map. That's all he did. And he just posted on TikTok, anyone else bareback flights. That's what he referred to it as. The concept referred to in a in vivid and perhaps unfortunate parlance as raw dogging, flying raw, or bareback resonated with many of the comments on his TikTok page. Hmm. Yup, from London to Miami this week, pure bareback, no food or water. I swear barebacking flights makes it go quicker, end quote. So essentially, you get on that Delta flight, you got the little screen on the back of the yeah. seat, and you just watch the little plane Go to your destination. Yeah, I, I'm. Uh, I, I push the flight tracker up every once in a while. Yeah, but um, you're reading, right? Yeah, for me, ninety percent of the flights that are work driven, I'm actually working on either some sort of game intel. That's what I thought. Working on calendars, working on emails. I I don't know that I can seven hours. Seven hours. No chance. I could do like, for instance, I went MCO back to RDU. Okay. Ninety minutes. Yeah. Not an issue. Yeah. But I think there's something to this. On this trip to Florida, sure, I went to Dry Tortugas. If you're not familiar with Dry Tortugas, it's a national park that is built around and the surrounding waters and reefs around Fort Jefferson. Oh, okay. Which has its ties back to you know the old shipping lanes, right? And, right. You know, building up. You know, anyway, I don't need to get into the history of it. There's two ways to get to Fort Jefferson. You can take a water plane, mm-hmm. which is like fifteen hundred dollars a pop. A little I, rich. I ain't got that kind of money. A little money. rich for the card. Or you can get on the Yankee Freedom. It's a boat 
that's run by the National Park Service, where it's contracted out by the National Park Service to take you on a two and a half hour boat trip from Key West to Fort Jefferson. Oh boy. That's what we did. Now it's really, really good. They give you breakfast. You have to get there at seven o'clock in the morning. They provide breakfast. They provide a bagged lunch. They give you the snorkel stuff. I oh, mean, they, they give do. you all the stuff. Wow, how about that? And it's not $1,500 a pop. That's good. So they give you all that stuff. So we did it. Going down to Fort Jefferson, pretty easy sailing. You know, winds were not picked up at that point. Not that mm-hmm. choppy. On the way back, the winds had picked up from the east, which was the worst thing that could have happened. And it was wavy as hell. I mean, we're talking like I'm out of my seat, like kind many, of waves. How many times did you see the bag lunch? Uh, well, <laughs> funny you mentioned that. Everybody on the boat, the, the, the crew was like, if you're going to take Dramamine, you need to do it now. Don't come to us 45 minutes into this boat trip asking for Dramamine because that thing's not going to kick in until we're about 30 minutes from shore. Like, okay. I'm fine. How does this relate to raw dogging? A trip. Well, I'm, I brought my Kindle. I'm going to read this new book. No, you're not. Nah, man. No, you're not. Not on this. Nope. Not on this. So I had to do my old trick because growing up in South Florida, all my buddies were right. the boat guys. Sure. I was not. But they're like, we go out late, fish, all that kind of stuff. They're like, just keep your eye on the horizon, man. Mm-hmm. Just keep your eye on the horizon. Don't worry about anything else. You'll be fine. You'll feel a little nauseous, but you won't throw up. So I am on this boat. The crew guys are just all over the place. There's stuff spilling everywhere. People are puking everywhere, everywhere. I let me put it like this. I will not be eating Doritos anytime soon. I'm just going to oh, put it like that. Don't. So I'm keeping my eye. I'm again, I'm inside and I'm just keeping my eyes locked on that damn horizon for two hours That's before water. the thing is terrible. So. I'm thinking about this. I'm going, you know, I'm like, God, this is going to be the longest damn two hours ever. But I was laser focused on that horizon. And it I went did fast. Not, it went so quick. Stop it. It went so quick. So I think there's something to this. I think there is something you, to it. I'm going to let you be the guy out front. All right. All right. I'm uh, not. I'm not playing that all game. All right. right let's now. see. Uh, two quick ones from Threads. Michael. Hey, Joe. Charlotte pitched the stadium to Tepper as a large music venue. Would he find more of it? Wait a second. <laughs> did I hear this right? Now, granted, I don't follow a lot of stuff in the offseason as closely as I do when the lights are on, yeah. like in mid-August. Did I understand, listening to you and Brownlow, that this is a stadium in like 2036, they fund it? No, so the way they are signing a 20-year agreement with Tepper, that is a no the city clause. Is. The city is with Tepper. So from now until 20. 20- 44? But there's a five-year early exit. So if Tepper wants to, at year 15, buy the penalty out to move the team, he can't. So that'd be 39. But part of the agreement is to force a conversation about a new stadium in 2037 and it being built no later than or being completed no later than 2046. To which, as you know this, as you've with the Falcons and Mercedes-Benz Dome and the old Georgia Dome and all that kind of stuff, you get to a point where you're just like, Man, I can dress this bad boy up all you want. We're just going to need a new stadium. I wish they just would have said, let's go ahead with a new stadium. I've had people from Charlotte reach out to me okay. and say that would be the logical thing to do. Uh-huh. But the problem is Tepper has soured the relationship with the city of Charlotte so badly mm. that where he could potentially buy the land, like that pipe place, they won't do it. Or they're like, yeah, we'll sell it to you, but you're going to be paying 20% over market. That kind of thing. So it's a really weird spot. Really weird spot for them at this point in time. Mm, Interesting. And we'll close out of here on this from uh, Random Frequencies on YouTube. Joe calling his brother a Disney adult is the Spider-Man pointing meme if I ever heard it. No, your brother's always been a Disney adult. 100%. You've talked about your brother for years. I was like, hey, now he's like, no, no, no. And he goes, he responds, Random Frequencies responds, Mr. I'm only going to eat poutine at Epcot and in Canada from now on. Just having a laugh, buddy. Now, I mean, look, I am Disney adult adjacent. I'll, I'll put it like that. Yeah. I'll put it like that. You what? and like there, there's several people I know who are 40 ish. Yes. And love going to Disney. Yes. Good. Wes, we appreciate it, man. Anytime. Happy to fill in. I just love that you're in town. Yeah. It worked out swimming. It did. On, I'm going to be in town a lot intermittently through the summer. Oh, well, Got, don't, uh, don't, no, no, t- don't uh, tell me that. No, Gilio. Gilio, I've I, I come in and frustrate Gilio a couple of times and then it'll be. <laughs> Because I know I drive him crazy sometimes. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, I'm in town. I got a 40th high school reunion oh, man. in late July. Oh, geez. How about that? You want to talk about aging yourself, uh, trying that 40-year reunion and going to the beach this weekend, spend a couple days. And- You're going to break out the basketball uniform? No. No, basketball uniform. Although I'm, you know, getting you see, yeah, I mean, look, we all, we're, all, we're all getting better. No, I've, I've got the jersey, but I'm not breaking it out. <laughs> all right, Wes. Well, appreciate you, it, man. You bet.